Good afternoon to all you. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining today with us. And today, our guest from Lincoln University College, we are proud to have with us Dr. Shoma Bandopadhyay. She has done her PhD from University of India, and she was joined her career in two, back in 2001 as a lecturer in Habra College on Anthropology. And later on, she joined, uh, promoted to associate professor in 2014, and Dr. Bandopadhyay has served as guest lecturer in different department of University of Calcutta, Museology. And then she uh, worked on different tribe uh, field work on situation of cloak taxonomy among the Sauthals in Kolkata since 1995 on research and different university. And then she also awarded best paper and young scientist award in Indian Science Congress. So. She has also published book on human cognition management of natural resources and social relations. And at present, she is a principal of Narsingha Dutta College of Haura. It is in India. And without further delaying in our time, we invite Madam to deliver her lecture on lockdown and Himalayan tourism. So we welcome Madam and any question you can ask after the session over. Thank you. Madam, please take over. Thank you very much, Dr. Kodar. A very good afternoon to my Indian friends and a very good evening to my Malaysian friends. And I express my sincere gratitude to the organizers of Lincoln University College to give me such an opportunity to share my ideas, some of my knowledge, some experience uh, regarding Himalayan tourism and some different aspects of Himalaya. Now, tourism actually is right now a promising industry in India, so far as Indian economy is concerned, because uh, it uh, contributes a handsome amount of revenue and also have a great effect on the socio-economic condition of India as a whole. So first of all, let's see what is the role of tourism in India what is the role of uh, tourism in India as a whole? First of all, let's see that. In India, this sector employs, can you hear me please? Hello? Can you hear me? Am I audible? Yes, madam, we are hearing you. Okay, okay, thank you. There's echo, so I off one. Okay. okay. Now, this sector actually employs 12.75% of the country's workforce. 5.56% of it uh, is uh, directly involved and 7.19% is indirectly involved. So this is really a fact that uh, a very broad sector of people and it's a great workforce is involved in tourism in India. So naturally tourism can be uh, an important subject to discuss over. And uh, India's COVID-19 lockdown, it is anticipated that 38 million job losses in the travel and tourism industry may happen during this lockdown period of within Indian tourism territory. And uh, in overall situation, over 87 million people were employed in tourism industry only in 2018 and 19. As you all know, India is a lucrative place for tourism for the foreign tourists also. And foreign tourist arrivals in India 
which saw a 9% decline in February over January and 7% fall compared to February 2019 plummeted in March 2020. Naturally, occupancies across hotels in India crashed by over 40%. As you all know, management of foreign tourists, the, the total thing, the total job starts from November, December previous year, so that the tourists can enjoy their tour and, can, and, and we can provide our hospitality to them for the maximum extent. So we, we already have that data, that occupancies across the hotels in India stroshed, crashed by over 40%. Now the question is, why I have chosen Himalayan tourism only? The first thing is the tourism is a vast subject. And if we consider Indian tourism as a whole, it will, be, it will not be convenient to discuss or it will not be convenient to cover within a single lecture. So for this specification purpose, I have chosen Himalayan tourism, but not only for specification, this choice has some other reasons also. First of all, Himalaya has played a significant role in the foundation of our Indian Oriental culture. This total cultural prescription of our, our country has a great role of Madam, Himalayan philosophy. Madam, yes. Uh, can you bring yes. the speaker a little uh, nearer? The little sound is less. Okay, is it all right? Is it all right now? Yes, madam, I think so. Is it all right? Yes, yes, okay, I think. Okay, okay. Should I carry on? Yes, madam, please. Okay. Now, this is the first reason of choosing uh, Himalaya. And uh, the second thing is, Himalaya has faced, Himalaya has witnessed a long evolution of tourism itself. I'll come to later in my later slides that Himalaya has faced a tourism evolution in, in its own territory. And finally, in Himalayan tourism, a good number of local people, local residents and indigenous people, they are involved in directly or indirectly in the total tourism industry. Tourism, in a broader sense, has existed for a long time in the Himalayas in the form of pilgrimage. Actually, footfall in Himalaya, it was started from a long period when there were not at all any pathway to reach over a place. People came from different parts of the world in different pilgrimage of Himalaya when there was, there were no, not at, not at all a pathway also. Now we have some trekking trails, we have some choppers, we have good number of transport, we have roads also to reach, reach some remote places. But this pilgrimage was started when all these things were nothing but a dream. Since that period, pilgrimage was started in India. And then, With the arrival of the British in the 19th century summer, in the, in the 19th century, summer resorts, uh, so-called hill stations were established. As you all know, several summer resorts and several uh, hill stations are there in Himalaya, which also contribute a good amount of revenue in our Indian tourism. I don't know why the slides are not going on. Next, the modern tourism in the Himalayan region 
activities such as trekking, mountain climbing, sightseeing, and winter sports has been introduced only in the last few decades. And finally, the ecotourism project started in 1995 and its goal was the conservation of biodiversity and natural resources through increased capacity and actions of the stakeholders. So you can see that a great evolution in tourism Himalaya has faced. Naturally, Himalayan tourism itself is an important topic of discussion regarding the Indian tourism as a whole. So I have chosen this topic. And for this Himalayan tourism, the total lecture I have segregated into different parts. The first one is tourism related to pilgrimage, where I have considered four yatras, Chardham Yatra in Uttarakhand, Amarnath Yatra, Adhikailash Yatra, and Mansarva Yatra. And in the second part, I have considered mountaineering and mountain tourism. And in the final part, I have taken community-based tourism especially in Sikkim and West Bengal. In Himalayan region, community-based tourism is mostly prevailing in Sikkim and West Bengal. Some other areas also, community-based tourism are going on, but those community-based tourism spots are not so significant like that of Sikkim and West Bengal. Let's start with Chardham in Uttarakhand. This Chardham Yatra is also considered, also called as Chota Chardham Yatra because Jagat Guru Sankaracharya has created a Chaturmat concept where he has created uh, four mots in the four parts of India, north, south, east, and west. And to avoid this confusion, this Chardham Yatra is also called Chota Chardham Yatra. And this Chardham Yatra is restricted within the Uttarakhand state only. And this Uttarakhand is famous for Chardham Yatra, which literally means journey to four centers four religious centers mainly. These four religious centers are represented by Badrinath, dedicated to Lord Vishnu, Kedarnath, dedicated to Lord Shiva, Gangotri, the holy origin of river Ganges, and Yamunatri, the holy origin of river Yamuna. These four places are called as Chardham. Now, I have considered this Chardham Yatra because of its average footfall since prolonged days. Now, if I consider only the case of 2019 and 2018, the 2019 data says that a record 29 lakh pilgrims visited Chardham compared to over 27 lakh pilgrims in the previous year, including 9.2 lakh to Kedarnath, 10.2 lakh to Badrinath, 4.4 lakh to Yamunatri, and 5.03 lakh to Gangotri. Now you can see Kedarnath, actually transport is not available to reach over Kedarnath because that is a trekking trail. Even then, in an average 9.2 lakh, then that means more than nine lakh of people, they visit Kedarnath. That is the reality or that is the beauty of this pilgrimage. Badrinath, one can reach Badrinath through direct transport and more than 10 lakh people regularly visit Badrinath in the season of Chardham. Yamunatri and Gangotri, these two uh, places are also important in this Chardham Yatra because this total Chardham Yatra is important in Himalayan tourism for mainly two reasons. First thing is the number of tourists. And second thing is, as the number of tourists are more, naturally it will contribute more revenue. And not only that, more number of indigenous and local people, they are involved in this Chardhyam Yatra the, all over the season, and they are earning money from this Chardhyam Yatra, and it creates a, a, a source of a source of engagement and source of employment also. This is an employment gener generating Yatra or pilgrimage. That is why Chardhyam Yatra is significant in Himalayan tourism. And if we consider the statistics that uh, the season of Badrinath is May to November, that is also a se the season which is uh, now actually the total season is covered up within this lockdown period. 
As per statistics, in 2020, it was expected that around 15 lakh pilgrims could come in this season. And if you consider this graph, you will see that since 1990, this people are coming, the number of people, number of footfall is increasing. Only in case of 2013, after 2013, it was a steep downfall because of the massive disaster that was offered in Kedar Nath Shetra that I will come later on. After 2013, the footfall was steeply decreased, but now again it is increasing. Now again it is increasing and it was expected that it could be 15 lakh in 2020, 2020. <laughs> In case of Kedarnath, expected pilgrim was more 12 lakhs. So far visited only 15 members of Temple Trust. And in case of Badrinath, only 92 local people, they were allowed to visit Badrinath for some maintenance job of the temple itself. And in Kedarnath, no pilgrims are so far have reached Kedarnath, only the 15 members of Temple Trust have visited. And it is now totally touristless. Footfall in Gangotri and Yamunatri in 2019, it was more than 4 lakh. And in Yamunatri, it was around 4 lakh. But in this year, till date, no pilgrim has reached over these two temples. And this Chardham Yatra is most likely to be cancelled this year because the season is going on, the peak season is uh, actually over and now monsoon will come to the places and people are thinking that uh, this yatra should be cancelled this year but this yatra is not only a religious tradition but also provides direct and indirect employment to almost a million of people amounting turnover of rupees 12,000 crore. So you can imagine when this yatra is cancelled how, what, a, what a great loss will be there for the people who are directly or indirectly involved with this Chardham Yatra and what a great loss will be ultimately reflected in the Himalayan tourism all over. And who are actually the stakeholders who will suffer the most? The stakeholders include temple trusts, hotels, restaurants, government and private chopper companies, vehicles, owner of mules, local residents, and people working as porters, dolly bearers, and many others. As I've already said, number of people, they are directly or indirectly related with this Chardham Yatra. Naturally, when this lockdown will ultimately reflect the financial crash, they will also suffer. Another important Yatra is Amarnath Yatra. As you all know, Amarnath is situated in Jammu Kashmir, this cave is a Hindu shrine located in Jammu Kashmir in an altitude of 12,756 feet. Inside 40 meter cave, high Amarnath cave, a stalagmite is formed due to freezing of water drops, which grows up vertically, taking the shape of Shivalinga. And this stalagmite in shape of Shivalinga is worshipped by lakhs of people every year as the Amaresha Linga. This pilgrimage is also very important and very famous for all over the world. And this is also a revenue generating as well as employment generating, generating uh, yatra of Himalayan tourism. If you go on to, to the statistics of this Amarnath Yatra, you will see that uh, from 2015 to 2019, People are, the footfall is, there is ups and downs in footfall because Amarnath Shetra is directly related to different political situations of Jammu and Kashmir, which is going on. Every year, there are some ups and downs in political situations. Naturally, it is re directly related to the footfall of uh, Amarnath pilgrims. When the Kashmir is some politically convenient or some turmoil is a little bit down, people are getting more interested in visiting Amarnath Shetra. But one thing is very much important that even whatever be the turmoil is, whatever be the natural causes is, whatever be, might be the reason is, so far Amarnath Yatra has never been cancelled. This year also, 
Amarnath Yatra will be done. Amarnath Yatra will be for just 13 days this year, from 21st July to 3rd August. But due to COVID breakdown, breakup, uh, due, due to this kind of lockdown situation and some other uh, other uh, security reasons, <coughs> this uh, yatra will not be allowed through common route from Pahalgaon. Actually, this common route of Pahal Pahalgaon, Pahalgaon is located at the center of Srinagar and uh, uh, Jammu Kashmir state. And uh, this is much more convenient uh, regarding transport and some other um, advantages. But this year, this Yatra will not be allowed to Pahalgaon, but uh, the pilgrims who are interested to come, they will have to come to Baltal. That is an army route. And uh, that is a that is an another alternative route of reaching Amarnath Yatra. And strictly, pilgrims uh -huh. above 55 years will not be allowed to join this Yatra. Another one important Yatra is this is a 12 days trek from Dharchula Pitharagar, Uttarakhand. This is the Adi Kailash Yatra, which is organized by Kumar Mandal Vikash Nigam, an undertaking organization of the Uttarakhand government, and also some other private tour operators. Here also, many people go every year because this is also, this Kailash is one of the one of those kailashes which are uh, situated in, within the indian territory though adi kailash is very near to china border but it is situated within indian territory and this also have some important spiritual value to the pilgrims who are interested in trekking as well as pilgrimage also not only that in june 2015 kmbn has started homestay in different villages across the trek route and thousands of villagers got opportunity to earn some money during the Yatra season. So even in this case also, local residents and indigenous people, this Yatra is an employment, gen employment generating opportunity for them. And that is why this is also significant in Himalayan tourism. And Kailash Mansarva Yatra, as you all know, this is an internationally famous pilgrimage Though Kailash Mansarwar is not situated within Indian territory, but this is highly related to Himalayan tourism part of India because this international pilgrimage uh, is uh, in respect of revenue, footfall, as well as involvement of local residences, all the three factors which I am discussing so far, all these three factors are related to this Kailash Mansarwar Yatra too. That is why this is also important and this is also a revenue generating and employment generating yatra of Himalayan tourism. So these are the part of pilgrimage which I have already discussed. Now this is the first part of as, as we have started the journey of evolution of tourism in Himalayan territory. This is the first part that is the pilgrimage part is over. So many pilgrimage areas are there, so many pilgrimage spots are there in Himalaya. But I have considered only those pilgrimage spots which are directly related to employment generation, which, has, which are directly related, related to a high amount of footfall, as well as involvement of local residents. Kailash Manishalva Yatra pilgrim, pilgrimage is one of the most demanding and challenging of treks for pilgrims. And as you can see that more than 3,000 pilgrims from India joined this Yatra each year. As I've already told that this Yatra is, although this Kailash Mansarwar is not situated within Indian territory, but still it has some significance over Indian tourism, Indian Himalayan tourism especially, because of its involvement with Indian economy or rather Indian socioeconomic factors. Now let's go to, let's move to the second part of evolution, which we can say as the modern tourism, where mountaineering and different mountain tourisms are involved. Let's see from the mountaineering part first. As you all know, this is the high peak season for different expeditions for to reach the summit of different, uh, uh, different mountains, especially the mountains which are more than 8,000 feet Heights that is the 8000 Club Mountain, uh, 
this these mountains are this is a peak season for reach to reach the summit and nepal government has announced to cancel all climbing permits for 2020 to mount everest and other expeditions in the wake of covid-19 pandemic nepal government here has got a very significant role because uh, mainly the all the mountains with the expedition of the mountains like kanchenjunga like annapurna range like mount everest like makalu this kind of um, uh, mountains they are the starting point or the initiating point or the base camp of all these mountains actually are situated within the territory of nepal government so <clears throat> nepal has a lot a significant role in this mountaineering industry rather mountaineering part of this himalayan tourism this is also included within tourism because mountaineering is also a revenue generating uh, aspect as well as so many indigenous and local people they are involved in mountaineering industry also especially like the guides like the sherpas the porters and some other local people who also maintain some home stay some transport some drivers etc they are also involved in mountaineering industry for this kind of lockdown at least 1000 odd trekkers from across the state and country venturing to nepal for different expeditions including scaling the mount everest and kanchenjunga besides other peaks mountaineers estimate cumulative losses to run into crores of rupees so here also as because this mountaineering is stopped as because this mountaineering is cancelled this year so there will be a lo loss of crores of rupees and this crores of rupees loss will ultimately directly reflected to those stakeholders who actually wait for the whole year for a season to climb the mountain and to earn some money and their families are also waiting for that earning which they will get from this climbing season and with that earning they will cover the rest of the year and as i have already told that uh, during british period some hill stations and uh, and some other summer resorts like the thing were um, built up actually british government they have uh, considered himalaya as a place of leisure and entertainment also rather than uh, pilgrimage uh, so this kind of some major destinations especially uh, several other states and united territories indian territories sorry uh, in india like himachal pradesh jammu kashmir leh ladakh they have faced huge loss due to this lockdown and after this economic this financial year uh, this will be counted actually what amount of loss they have faced these states and these hill stations they have got their own organization and they will count over actual what kind of loss they have faced according to data released by the state government of himachal pradesh as many as 3.82 lakh foreign and 1 crore 68000 29 lakh 29231 domestic tourists arrived in the state during 2019 so you can see what a role of himachal pradesh and uh, the revenue generation role of himachal pradesh in himalayan tourism and under hpdc that means himachal pradesh tourism development corporation 3350 hotels 1656 home stays and uh, 2912 travel agencies are registered under this tourism development corporation so you can see what a huge industry it is only in the state of himachal pradesh which is directly related to himalayan tourism rather mountain tourism because from himachal pradesh in this himachal pradesh there are so many trek routes so many uh, mountaineering routes etc not only the hill stations but in mountaineering industry also himachal pradesh has got a significant role of its own next comes jammu kashmir jammu kashmir itself is suffering from a long period this is the this is suffering this corona virus pandemic has caused a panic in jammu kashmir as it means another spell of suffering for an already collapsed economy 
as we all know that the prolonged political disturbances and prolonged different kind of issues border issues and some other uh, international issues that have affected economy of jammu kashmir so already it's a collapsed one and after this corona virus pandemic this collapsed economy is getting another kind of panic bearing situation and kashmir chamber of commerce and industry has said that businesses had suffered losses of about rupees 18000 crore due to the clamp down following the abrogation of article 370 so already they have lost 18000 crore and they don't know right now what will be the amount of the cumulative loss after this lockdown is over le andada this is also a very important place in himalayan tourism as many as 40% of tourism companies are facing the risk of complete shutdown within next 3 to 6 months because the season of leh and ladakh is going on and almost it is reaching the end because uh, within september at best first week of october the khardumla pass that means the most important pass of leh ladakh that will be closed because snowfall will start and naturally the season will be over and the normal tourists they will not be able to come to this state to visit this state 37.5 percent may face temporary shutdown and according to survey of bot travel sentiment tracker 81 percent travel and tourism companies have lost their 100 percent revenue so here also a great loss is faced for this lockdown in himalaya and tourism in sikkim and west bengal stakeholders of the tourism industry conducted a survey in north bengal and sikkim to assess the impact of this nation wide lockdown and they have estimated a daily loss of rupees 19 crore because this sikkim and west bengal especially in north bengal this the himalayan tourism industry in is mainly depending upon the eco tourism and mainly the community based tourism which is which is got high significance among the especially the foreign tourists and that is why as because because of this lockdown this, that foreign tourists have cannot come and naturally the total community based tourism or the eco tourism is shut down and that is why this kind of estimated daily loss is 19 crores of rupees sikkim is a state which has announced self isolation even though sikkim has not a numerous positive cases of corona virus so far the state government has decided to keep its borders shut for tourists till october 2020 the government has said that it has been done to close all doors for the virus to enter the himalayan state sikkim government has given importance to safety security of its inhabitants of its citizens more than the economic pursuit so even before the corona corona pandemic has risen uh, or the this lockdown situation has prevailed they have shut down their all the borders and they have decided not to give entry to any tourist for the security and safety reasons of the inhabitants of sikkim in darjeeling hotel owners association decided to shut down around 330 hotels in darjeeling from july 1st to an indefinite period of time they have taken this decision that uh, because primarily as nationwide lockdown over corona virus crisis has left all hotels devoid of tourists because darjeeling is also uh, an interest for the foreign tourists also as well as indian tourists but due to less transportation due to lack of transportation no trains are there no planes are no, uh, no plane service is there air service is there so naturally people cannot reach over the place and even after they are they are telling that they will maintain all the corona protocols all the convenient things etc but people are getting panic and tourists are not coming over these places and naturally cost of maintenance is going to be unmanageable for these hoteliers and that is why they have decided to shut down the hotels till an indefinite period of time these are the statistics which i have given 
from different aspects of Himalayan tourism, starting from pilgrimage, uh, running to modern uh, mountaineering and mountain tourism, and finally the community-based tourism. But this is the statistical part only. Actually, what I want to share that very little section of people, they have something to do with these statistics. Because Himalayan tourism, the main warriors of Himalayan tourism is those indigenous people or the low, those local residents who actually are directly involved in this Himalayan tourism in shape of guide, in shape of porters, in shape of transport drivers, in shape of shared paths, etc., etc. But these statistics has nothing to do with these people because a very little section of these people has really access to know these statistics at all. They don't have internet connection in their home. Very rarely newspaper goes over their remote villages. And they also even don't understand what actually these statistics are. So they are facing a crisis. They are directly facing a crisis. They, they are seeing that uh, no tourists are there. Chardham Yatra is canceled. Naturally, there is no source of income. But still, they have to leave. And mentally, they are not locked. They can never be locked mentally because they have to leave by any way. So we can say that Himalayans cannot be locked. Lockdown cannot lock Himalayan actually. Let's see how they are not locked. These Chartham temples, pilgrims are not there. But all the rituals regarding opening ceremony and the daily offerings are going on in all the temples of Chardham. You can see that the, I have given the dates and the uh, pictures also of the uh, starting an initial ceremony that which is called Kapat Kholna of these four temples I have given already. You can see that the opening ceremony has been done and all the rituals were followed and all the offerings were given to all the deities because temples cannot be locked, whatever be the situation is. The Doli Yatra of Kedarnath, it, it was commenced on 28th April 2020. This Doli Yatra is actually, it, it uh, starts from Ukhimat and ends to the Kedarnath temple and the deity is transported from one place to another place yes. because Kedarnath actually goes to Ukimat in the winter season. And again, it, he is restored in the Kedarnath temple through this Doli Yatra. So as because temple will have to be opened, deity cannot be locked. So Doli Yatra is, is uh, held, is commenced in this year also on 28th April, 2020. On the day of Kapat Kholna, the Kapat doors of Kedarnath have been opened only to a limited number due to this coronavirus pandemic. Only 16 people, including the priests, Shiva Shankar Ling, were there. And they have prayed to Lord Kedar, may Lord Kedarnath make us capable to fight this pandemic. This is their mental makeup. They are always in such a fight. They want to leave. And they have also, also prayed, may all devotees of Lord Shiva be healthy, happy, and may God bless the entire world. Here lies the Himalayan as well as the Indian philosophy. Himalayan people, while they are play, praying to the, their God, they are praying for the globe. They are not praying for their own resident, own area only, because this is the philosophy of Bashudhaiva Kutumbakam. They feel it, they obey it and they always pray for the whole world. And here in this case also, they have prayed to Lord Kedar to give blessings for the entire world. A Sherpa is not locked. Climbers and the Nepal Mountaineering Association suggested that the government should use this period, this time as an opportunity by mobilizing the tourism workers for an Everest cleanup campaign. As you all know, Everest is the highest dustbin of this world. Highest amount of garbage is found in Everest right now because numerous people are 
reaching the summit of Everest and the liters and other things they are they are uh, left over there. That amount is huge and it needs clean up operation, clean up campaign for the betterment of future environment of Everest. And the Climbers Association, they have felt that as because in this year, there is no mountaineering, climbing is totally shut down. So this period can be used as, a, as an advantage for cleaning up campaign of this Everest clean up, clean up, cleaning up operation. And their demand is also supported by the Depart Department of Tourism Government of Nepal as Danduraj Ghirimi, chief of this department, he told that after the virus wiped out thousands of jobs, the association proposed that the unemployed Sherpas be deployed to retrieve trash and dead bodies from the world's highest mountain. And this operation will go on during this lockdown period. So the Sherpas are also not locked. The porters are not locked because though there is no tourist, though there is no pilgrim, but they are doing some job of transporting things from one place to another place. They are doing job of transporting different goods to some stay alone shops and stay alone different homestays or like that. And they are not locked at all. They are also doing something for getting some money because they have to leave. If they simply lock themselves and do nothing and, and, and cannot do anything, they will not be able to earn, a, uh, uh, earn any money and it will be difficult for them to leave and to maintain their families. So they will have to do some work and naturally and mentally also they are not locked. They know that they will have to do something. Mountaineering institutes in the different mountaineering discourses, some parts are there where yoga, pranayam, meditation, etc. These are taught. This kind of lessons are there. As because the trainees cannot physically come and join the classes, they have started online courses on these discourses and online video sessions. These kind of things that is different expeditions and rescue operations, these are actually taught through audio visual effects. Naturally, these kind of things they have they are now broadcasting in some online video sessions, and the trainees are getting training over this kind of things I like expeditions and rescue operations. So mountaineering institutions are also doing some job that is also not locked. In 29th May 2020, birthday of Tenzing Norge was observed in HMI, Himalayan Mountaining Institute, Darjeeling, with clear and strict COVID protocol. As you can see from this slide, that everybody is see, everybody is standing, maintaining a typical social distance, and they are maintaining all the rules, all the protocols which are mentioned in different, different uh, instructions from government of India as well as government of West Bengal. So mountaineering institutes are also not locked. Ecotourism is not locked. Despite their losses, section of ecotourism operators and grassroots conservation workers have risen up to challenge of stopping the further spread of the viral disease by conducting awareness campaigns for their local communities. Because involvement of local communities and their training, and their training towards hospitality and other convenient other things which will ultimately provide will, to be provided to the tourists, that is important. So this is they have taken this lockdown as an opportunity to train their future business partners or their future generations how to be a, a good ecotourism operator. So they have taken this time as an opportunity to train their future generation ecotourism operators. Actually, COVID is not horrifying for the Himalayas because each and every event, the magnitude of horrifying or a scary, how scary it is, this is actually considered with its direct relation to death toll. Because Himalayan people are used to see death toll, number of death, numerous people are dying all every alternate year due to some natural disaster and due to some natural bad weather and some like other causes. Now, if you can see that this comparative chart state-wise, 
In Uttarakhand, COVID-19 death till 15-6-2020. COVID-19 death is 26 only in the whole state of Uttarakhand. But in Chargham Yatra only, in 2019, 41 people have died due to bad weather and bad natural condition. In Himachal Pradesh, COVID death, death till 15-6 is 8. And in a flood, more than 1,300 people have died. In Yammu Kashmir, COVID death 75. And only in the Amarnath Yatra, Amarnath Yatra is a very segregated part of the total uh, Yammu Kashmir state. 22 people have died due to natural bad weather and bad natural condition. In Ladakh, so far, no COVID death. But in an avalanche in 2019, seven civilian and 11 personnel army personnel have died. And in Nepal, so far, 21 people have died in COVID-19. And let's see what was the mountaineering death or death occurred in, during mountaineering in Nepal in 2019 and some other cases. Let's see. People died during Mount Everest expedition in natural disaster. 2014, Number of death, 12 Sherpa and 4 climbers. This is the natural cause, avalanche in Kumbu Ice Fall. 2015, 19 death, climbers, all the 19 people were climbers, and this was due to an earthquake. In 2019, 11 people have died. Of them, three, was, uh, three were Sherpa and 8 climbers, and due to bad weather. So naturally, they are facing numerous deaths every alternate year or every year also, that is horrifying for them. As because the number of death toll is not so remarkable so far. People are not get, getting horrified for this COVID-19 because death toll is the parameter for measuring the magnitude of seriousness of an event for these Himalayan tourism warriors. What is horrifying for them? This thing is horrifying for them because you can see these two pictures. As I have already said that in 2013, a flash flood was occurred on 16th June 2013 in Kedarnath Shetra due to burst of Churabali Tal, due to cloud burst and massive amount of rain and flash flood occurred. This was the left one is the picture of showing Rambara before the disaster. Rambara is a hamlet within the trek route of Kedarna from Gorikund. And after disaster, you can see what actually Rambara is. And this thing, thousands of people residing in Rambara were washed away just within a glimpse of eye. This is horrifying for the Himalayan tourism warriors. This is horrifying for the Himalayan people because death matters. Until or unless death is occurring, massive death is occurring, they cannot horrify Himalayan people. That event cannot horrify Himalayan people so far. This is the horrifying Kumbu ice fall, what I have already mentioned in 2014. And this is the horrifying avalanche due to earthquake in 2015. So these kind of things are really horrifying for them, not yet COVID-19. Now see, regarding lockdown, we can see difference in cognition also, in cognition of uh, the people residing in Himalayan areas. I have taken statement of two different people, but engaged in similar occupation. One is Howard, Santon, Howard Stanton of Borneo. He is actually running a lodge, ecotourism lodge. He is saying that all of this has now fallen apart. We have had to put all staff on unpaid leave to reduce all costs until a better time to open becomes available. We have no idea when that will be. So the total no, concept worry. of loss, the total concept of loss, the total consideration of loss is is, uh, is stimulated with economic pursuit. So they are thinking the total lockdown period or the total loss within an economic pursuit. But a lodge holder, a Bengali one, Kanchan Mukhopadhyay, I have talked with him. 
he is running a lodge in Balmyoxifin. He said, actually, this this uh, Kanchan is not indigenous people of Himalaya, but he is residing over there when when he was three years old. So we can we can see that he is also a Himalayan now, and he is working all the people. They are indigenous people of Himalaya. Anyway, he is telling the actually what they are telling, and he is working as a spokesperson here. He is telling that pause on tourism will definitely have some negative impact, especially on the livelihoods and indigenous communities involved in ecotourism. Still, it is a necessary step for the long term. Facing crisis, no doubt. their families are also facing crisis they are running shortage of uh, finance they are running shortage of money but they have some hope within their mind they still feel it necessary to step and this is a necessary step for the long term because they want to live in future so they want to live they want this kind of security for their future generation also so they are ready to face some crisis but they feel that it is necessary this is a necessary step for sustainable time now let's see what actually himalayans think about himalaya and how this kind of crisis is managed by the himalayans actually we can now see this as i have already mentioned death toll is a great parameter so in their cognition there is no such thing as bad weather so bad weather is the most horrifying thing for them and whatever be the crisis is they feel that life will find a way they have faced a lot of crisis they are facing lot of crisis every alternate year and every year also but they feel that life will find a way jaan hai to jahan hai if we are alive we will somehow manage to live and our family will somehow manage to live but we will have to live fast and due to bad weather bad weather sometimes they have to face this kind of situation that people are going lost people a death toll reaches over at that horrifying part and the horrifying number that they will have to think will i live so living or being alive is a very much important thing for this himalayan people and they know that life will find its way because life is like a river for their cognition in their cognition life is like a river river will face obstacle and will flow on in due course and life will also flow on in this type of due course also and secondly they feel that half of the mountain is your friend whatever we are facing now we are facing the uphill we are going on and on and on and finally we will reach the summit and then we will go downhill so they feel they say that choti tak to chalna hai uske baad to utarna hi hai so choti tak chalna they will face they have that capability they have that feeling they have that attitude that choti tak chalna hai choti tak chal jao bas uske baad to utarna hi hai so half of the mountain is your friend and what goes up must come down so this is their philosophy and they feel that possibilities are endless lockdown should not be, should not lock everybody they will have to think some alternative source of source to live to live with because to be alive is the most important thing because there is light at the end of the tunnel they believe that crisis will come and crisis will go just like natural disasters crisis will come and crisis will go but they will have to leave because they will have to leave because they have to leave leaving is the most important criteria and always we think especially when we are bound to stay at home and we are some sometimes suppressing our facts that uh, we are thinking that if i declare that i have i have affected with this disease i'll have to stay alone and this message is coming from the himalayan people that staying alone is not the end of life 
being alone at the top of the mountain makes you feel like you are at the center of the universe so himalaya has taught us so many things and in our indian philosophy and in our indian culture as we all know himalaya has play, plays played a very significant role and even in this crisis period also messages are coming on from the himalayan tourism part and the himalayan tourism warriors there's nothing to be worried about we are facing crisis as they are also facing but we must build up our attitude to face this crisis we will have to modify some behavioral pattern of our life we will have to modify some attitude of our life we have so many things with us these people these mountain tourism warriors they don't have plenty of water to wash their hand frequently as per who protocol using sanitizer they cannot afford but still they have that attitude that we will conquer we will live because living is important so this attitude this kind of cognition is really an asset of our nation and this kind of message if we can follow in our life also and if we can adopt this kind of attitude or attitude to fight and if we can honor this kind of cognition to love our nature and if we can respect this kind of uh, concept to jaan hai to jahan hai we have the ability to fight against all kind of things all kind of horrifying things not only covid 19 so many natural disasters so many things which are yet to come we have we we can be we will be able to fight against all these kind of things so this kind of message this kind of teachings are coming from these himalayan mountain tourism warriors which are none but the indigenous less literate and less uh, updated people of the himalayan different from hima coming from different himalayan villages where there is no source of internet no source of this kind of conveniences so friends nothing to be worried about this himalayan tourism the warriors they are sending us messages let's follow the message and don't never think that you are alone whenever you are alone think that you are in the center of the universe thank you thank you madam for your nice presentation and we have with us with different persons with different dignitaries uh, we have seen that exim bank university vice chancellor also there our professors also there dr ibrahim dr ali dr lubna everybody was there so as you told madam rightly that covid is having a pandemic situation and lockdown is the last stage the government is taking because it is hampering the economy of the country very much highly affected for that so as you told that around 30 100000 people is visiting the uh, tourism industry in the four places of india as himalayan tourism industry around you told that 20, uh, in 2019 around 27 100000 lakh people so that was already closed down now i also visited sikkim in last uh, 2000 one year back by flight we go to supposed to land in gangtok but we have to for the fog we have to land to other place then from there we have to go by car so this is a normal situation in uh, what you call himalayan range that very much highly fog etc but tourism is affected highly in all over the world like in malaysia also it is tourism based many persons living on tourism and they don't have the fund liquidity of the fund to run their business in long term without the support of the people without earning money from the sources the hotels restaurant the shore, the tourism cars etc they all depends like the sherpa you told in nepali uh, means nepal region or himalayan region they all depend on the customer and day to day earn they they don't have the fund liquidity of the fund to run their daily life for longer time of period so if the lockdown persists for a longer time so it is very difficult and lockdown is not the solve of the diseases it is only a learning time because we are in comfort zone we means previously in comfort zone there is a fear that the corona will come as come and then 
it is a learning zone that how we can tackle the corona we can handle the corona we have to live with the corona there is no vaccine it will uh, can be generated immediately we already know so how we can live with this corona how we can prepare ourselves that is the motto As just today i am monitoring the screen that usa then brazil then russia then the fourth name is india india going to top about the infection infected persons in corona and the death rate is very high compared to usa brazil and russia death is maximum in india because the treatment facility is not there so we have to take care of ourselves that how we can uh, means protect our things in himalayan region as you rightly told that there is no sanitizer they cannot afford in india all over the condition is like that many countries is like that and also they don't have the what do you call the um, uh, what do you call that water for washing the hands with soap solution also so this is a very tough condition for all of us how we can manage but this is a learning zone and from there we are definitely will go to the growth zone and we will overcome this situation but we have to be careful and the situation is not same as before it will be changed and we hope that himalayan tourism also will survive and it will of, of course it will be come back as we seen that picture of uh, tenjing norge uh, place the persons sitting uh, standing with a separate distance with circle but i don't know how maintain of everything can be possible in every place and also the treatment facility so without wasting any much time any speak any participant want to ask any question if no we will end the session here madam any remark please no no fantastic thank you all and i'm really delighted to have the scope to share my ideas with you with this august audience thank you thank you all the participants who joined to the zoom and also i have seen in youtube also more than 60 person is watching live the program so thank you madam for kindly agree for delivering the speech and our professors also there dr ali dr ibrahim all is uh, welcoming you to lincoln thank you madam okay thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you all